Abdul One, love the customer or perish. Welcome to the age of the customer. Yes, love the customer or perish. It's that simple. The corporate symmetry is full of companies that could not adjust to the new reality and pay the supreme price. The latest is, of course, Kodak, a company we all grew to admire but could not adjust to the new reality. People do not want your product, but the product on your product. What is the bundle of service? What is the bundle of value you are giving to the customer? It is the end, not the means to the end you are, you are looking at. So let's look at the five pages of civilization. The five pages of civilization you can see there. The age of wisdom, the age of knowledge, the age of industrial age, manufacturer age, and the hunter gatherers. Since records started to be kept, adequate records started to be kept, more than 2,000 years today, and from hunter gatherers, when our four peers were hunter gatherers, moving on to the agricultural age, moving on to the industrial age, which actually began with the invention of the steam engine, to the knowledge age, which came about with the sending of man, the Russian Sputnik, in 1957 to orbit the Earth. That heralded the knowledge age. And today, we are in the age of wisdom, with the advent of the internet. So, you cannot provide service to the customer in the age of wisdom as you did in the industrial age. Most companies are still using the industrial age mindset in delivering service, which is really very, very sad. And companies that continue to do that will, of course, pay the supreme price, no matter how big you are. So, the four eras of industrial age, we had the era of manufacturing, which actually began in the 1900 with the likes of Ford, the likes of um, NCR, National Cash Register, and so on. Moving on to the the second industrial age or the industrial era, the era of distribution where such giant companies like the Walmart took over the whole world, companies like Toyota that were able to distribute their products to the whole world, they gained prominence. And moving on to the era of information, this is the era of the such giants like the Microsoft and, and the Googles and well, now the connected PCs benefit those who control information. And now we are in the, of course, the era of the customer with the advent of internet. The customers are more aware, are more educated, are more empowered. They demand to be given good, excellent service. So that's why such companies like um, Apple Computer, the Southwest Airlines, Nordstrom, companies like uh, USAA have gained prominence. Companies like Amazon have gained prominence by the value they attach to giving customers good service. We have borrowed this um, drawing from Harry Manning and um, Kerry Bodine of uh, Forrester Research, their latest book, Outside in the Power of Putting Customers at the Center of Your Business. So, how is the why the era of the customer is different? The basic reason is that distance is dead. Distance is dead with the era of the call, the era of the internet. Just by the press of a button, you can get all the information. In fact, the word Google is now a verb. You can Google, you can Google any information that you want. You can Google and get. So distance is dead. Just enter a plane in London within three, four, five, six hours. You are in New York. Enter a plane in Lagos. Then six hours you are in London. So the world is indeed a global village. So because of this, people want the things to be done fast, speed, information growth. So people like prefer companies that can make meaning out of this information growth, can enable them meander, can enable them move despite the information growth. We are now in the age of abundance. In fact, despite pockets of poverty here and there in uh, we 
live in an age of so much abundance. In fact, the life we live today, our forefathers could hardly dream of. There's no house today you will not see a microwave oven, um, a TV set, a, not just a TV set, a color TV set. Uh, you can watch CNN from anywhere in the world with the lives of DSTV. So we are really in an age of abundance, global over this. So this global over capacity products blood on limited choices. So people are now actually the search for meaning. People are spiritual search for meaning. You now remember Abraham, Abraham um, Maslow's um, hierarchies of need. Those looking for self actualization. So people are looking for a higher purpose, being part of something bigger than yourself. That is how this um, why the era of the customer is different. So the one question every company must ask or answer the one question every customer is asking you is why w-i-i-f-m what is it for me what is it for me if you cannot answer that question in a very crystal clear manner to the customer the customer is going to abandon you so customers are looking for three things in this new era customers are looking for three things speed speed comfort Comfort, instant gratification, instant gratification. Speed is what we call agility. Are you able to supply goods, services with speed of light? If you cannot, it will be companies that will supplant you. Are you able to create the ambience? Are you able to make doing business with you very, very easy? Comfort. Make it possible for customers to do business with you. Easy. Make it be approachable. Make it easy for com for customers to do business with you, approachable, do things in a fast, speedy way, and customers are raising their hands. Instant gratification. No one wants to to be delayed. What do you have? Can you supply it? How fast can you supply it? I want it now. Everybody wants. In fact, not even now. They want it yesterday. So if you are not able. To adjust to new reality, my friend. The world will leave you behind. So who will die? Who will survive in the age of the customer? And the group, the co-founder of Intel, gave a graphic picture of how they face this question. Who will die? Who will survive? In his book, only the paranoid survive. He gave the graphic picture how the sad decision, or should I say triumphant decision, that many in memory chips will not do them any good because the Japanese were landing memory chips in the US at a price Intel could not compete with. So they had to make up the decision to exit memory chips and move up the value chain. So what did they do? In only the Parma survive and the groups gives the ruler the graphic picture how they fired themselves here is that got to more fire themselves. They just walked out of the door and walked in again. Symbolically, fired themselves and from that day on decided not to do memory chips any longer. So, who will die? Who will survive in the age of the customer? The organizations who will die are the ones that are still operating with the industrial two to three mindsets, industrial two to three mindsets. If you are still operating in the industrial two, two to three mindsets, you are focusing on distribution, you are focusing on manufacturing, you are not focusing on the customer, you'll be left behind. You can show that you get people as a resource. You can dispense with them anyhow. Do not train them. Such organizations will not last long. But an organization that love themselves more than they love their country, Customers, social organizations will not live long. I remember one of the top banks I was involved in. The parking lot was always reserved for customers, while staff were advised to find a way to park their cars behind the main building, thereby creating space for customers to park their cars. But what do you have today in most companies? Most companies. Staff they do not think ahead either because of the space constraints they have, they do not think 
when customers come to do business, we are able to park their cars. Just when once the staff park their cars, there's no space for customers. One has to, you have to be creative. You have to think ahead. Where will customers park their cars if they come? They are not able to do that, of course. They belong to the old school. And RIP old school. RIP old school. Because you must love the customer as much as you love yourself. If you love your customer as much as you love yourself, you must always sit down and think how, what do we need to do to ensure to make life easy for the customer. So organizations that love themselves more than their clients will not survive. You have to flip the coin that everybody, the staff, the employees, and the customers are in the same boat and each must help each other. So who will be the organization that survive? The organization that will survive, they are going to put their people first. They celebrate their people, their CEO, their directors, their general managers blow the trumpet for their staff. They go out and blow trumpet for their customers. Those are the organizations that survive. Not organizations that the CEO has a, a penthouse to himself and is completely inaccessible. Those are organizations of the industrial age. Organizations with customer-centric mindsets, those are the organizations that will survive. They're always thinking in their early morning sessions, they think about the customer. What do we need to do to make the customer proud of us? What do we need to do to make the customers happy with us? Always, the customer is always on top of the agenda in everything they discuss. They devote more time discussing the customer than discussing profit and loss account, than discussing the balance sheet. Industrial age companies still put the balance sheet, the profit and loss account, the cash flow, of the agenda. They do not forget these statements, cash flow, balance sheet, in income statements, they are all lacking indicator. Profit is a lacking indicator. If you do it well, the profits will come. If you do it well, profits will come. The organizations that will survive there are the organizations that know their why for existence. Organizations that know their why for existence, they have, they have unvarnished truth about their mission. Their mission is to serve, to serve. If you do that, of course, the profit will definitely come. So, welcome to the age of the customer, where the customer determines who stays, where the customer, where people are the propellants of success where service design makes a huge difference, where strategy without execution means instant failure, where agility, speed, action, and cash in the bank. If you are not able to imbibe, to make this understanding a part of your genetic code, you are not likely to survive for long. You are not. So make the whole knowledge the whole concept, the whole notion that the customer is the reason we are here, a part of your mantra. Make it a mantra. The reason you are here is because of the customer. Unless you are able to see things in that light, you are not likely to survive for long. So, with that in mind, let's move on to 